Hello everyone. Today we talk about the lecture two, uh, heart and blood. Okay, the first one is the heart. Heart is basically his organs. Okay, that used for pumping the blood. Okay, and pass through the your body throughout your body. And we have three layers of the of the heart. The first one here we have pericardium. The word peri means around, and cardium here means the heart. So it is the outermost layers of the of the heart. So it contains a kind of blood vessels we call coronary blood vessels. So the coronary blood vessel here used for supplying the oxygen to the heart muscle. So the heart muscle here can keep pumping continuously throughout your body. And the next layer here we call myocardium. The myo means the muscles, and it is the middle layers of the heart. So that one contains the cardiac muscles. Okay, so the cardiac muscle here get pumping, make a pumping of the blood throughout your body, and the endo the endocardium it is internal layers. This one here contain the connective tissue. So the connective tissue here get lining to the cavities of the uh, heart. So uh, they make the the heart chamber here become smooth surface and reduce the friction from the blood flow. Okay, so this one from the pictures here, you can see three layers from the this one here it is the uh, pericardium. You can see the peric uh, pericardial fluid. The pericardial fluid here means the fluid that fill in the space between the muscles and the uh, pericardium in order to reduce the friction between muscles and the uh, tissue. This one. The next one is coronary artery. The coronary artery here basically is around the heart. Okay, and they feed oxygen gas and the nutrition, the nutrient to the heart muscles. And they also remove the waste product and the carbon dioxide. The waste product here get removed at the kidney. And the carbon dioxide here, you can remove it in the uh, in a in a lung. And if you have problems about the coronary arteries, for example, you can have the obstacles of the fat or even the tissue to the coronary artery caused by the uh, overweight like this, they can have the problems later. So the disease here we call atherosclerosis. The athero here means the artery and sclerosis here means become like a rock or hard like a rock. So this one is a situation that the coronary artery here become hardened. Basically, the normal structure here you have endothelium and smooth muscles like this. But if you have the fat, the lipid or fat here, or the calcium, or even the cell debris like this, get deposited into the walls of the coronary artery, they will get blocked the blood flow. So, the uh, heart muscle here cannot get enough oxygen, so they get dead. So, they can lead to the heart failure and cause the death. Okay, so the fat here like uh, deposit to the linings of the walls. After that, they enclose, enclose these blood vessels, enclose the coronary artery, and block the blood flow. So no oxygen. So the muscle, the heart muscle, get dead and lead to the heart failure. So this is the problems. And we have four chambers of the heart. Start from the right atrium here and the right ventricles and the left atrium and the left ventricles the way you remember here you can use the meme here Khoa Rai Sai Di Khoa Rai here for the word right here mean deoxy deoxygenated and Sai Di here for the oxygenated blood okay so you can determine by the colors here if you see the blue color like this it is a deoxygenated blood the blood with low O2 and the red one here you will see like this, it is oxygenated blood, the blood with high O2 condition, like this. And this is basic information from four chamber. The first one is right atrium or RA here. We have low oxygen content and the CO2 here, you have high CO2. And the blood here will pass through the valve. Valve basically is a, like a tissue that used for separating the blood between the chamber okay even chamber to chamber or even chamber to the blood vessels we call valve or even limb okay the the valve that gets separate it is a tricuspid valve that separate between the right atrium and right ventricle so the position here it is this one okay and this one the direction of blood flow here blood flow from right atrium to right ventricles and the right ventricle here rv 
is low oxygen conditions and they have high carbon dioxide condition uh, the valve name pulmonary valve or even pulmonary semilunar valve okay separate between RV to the pulmonary artery the direction of blood flow is flow from the right ventricles to the pulmonary artery pulmonary artery like this the full name and the left atrium LA here they use uh, basically they have high oxygen and low carbon dioxide uh, the valve that separate is bicuspid valve okay the bicuspid valve the location is here bicuspid valve and uh, blood flow from left atrium to left ventricles the left ventricle here have high O2 and low carbon dioxide this one use the aortic valve the location is here aortic valve okay and separate between left ventricles to the aorta okay aorta is a big blood vessel here location is one aorta like this and after that, here the chambers of the heart here yeah. this picture shows the valve the location you, you cut the, the heart like this this way and you can see many valve four valve the first one here you can see dry cuspid valve separate between right atrium to right ventricles and we have three valve here and we have aortic, aortic valve here it is a right ventricle subpulmonary artery okay and this is a bicuspid valve two valve here you two pieces of the valve and this one here for the dry cuspid you have three pieces of the valve so the name will be dry mean three and by here mean two okay uh, separate between the left atrium to the left ventricles so it's supposed to be Okay, and we will talk about the, the separation later when we go back to the uh, bicuspid valve here you will see that they separate between LA and LV so we write here this one LA sorry maybe this LA to LV and this one RA to RV this may be like this okay and another two it is the uh, aortic valve contain three valve here Three valve and the pulmonary valve here also another three valve. This one separate between the right ventricle to the pulmonary artery. My son went wrong. Sorry. Okay. From the table we see aortic valve, right? Aortic valve separate between LV and aorta. And this one is the pulmonary valve will be. R V to the pulmonary artery this way sorry for mistakes and the direct this is a valve in the in the heart here this table here represent the characters of the valve okay but you need to take the YouTube video so I will add this video later in the playlist okay the functions of the valve in the heart is to prevent the blood flow to flow back into the previous chamber for example if the blood flow from here we go down to this one and the valve here get enclosed this way and the blood here will move to the move forward and pass to the next uh, valve okay so the characters of the valve here you will see the tendon or sen in that link between the valve pieces to the tissue and prevent uh, the blood from uh, flow back into the previous chamber and the valve here for, for the aortic valve and pulmonary valve here we don't have yeah we don't have the tendon it's just closed okay so it's quite different blood vessels we have basically we have three types of blood vessels the first one is artery the second one it is the capillary and the last one is the vein in high we call uh, artery for lot dang capillary here for lot foy 
and the vein here for the dam. For artery, the artery is a kind of blood vessel, and this will lead the blood out of the heart. So the blood that they bring the blood away from the heart. Okay, the keyword will be bring the bring the blood away from the heart. And the capillary here is very small blood vessels. Okay, and this one get exchange the gas and the chemicals or the nutrient between the blood and the the blood and cells in many part of your body. Okay, and cause the exchange of chemicals. But when we mention the chemical here, chemical can be waste product or even the nutrient can be both of them. And the vein, this type of the blood vessel draw the blood back, the blood back to the heart again. Okay, so they bring the blood back to the heart. So the structures of the blood vessels, uh, in case of the artery and vein, this is the artery, this is the vein, this is the capillary. For the artery here, we have main three main layers. This one, this one, and the connective tissue. Sorry, this one. The the internal layer here, it is the connective tissue. It is an endothelium, the very very small tissue to reduce the friction. And the second one here it is a smooth muscles. This this layer. The soul muscle is here. Yeah, soul muscles. And when you compare soul muscle in the artery and vein here, the vein we have a very thin layers of the smooth muscles, thinner layer. So the opening of the vein here will be bigger or larger, and the openings of the artery here will be smaller, but they have thicker smooth muscles. The last one is connective tissue, the the outermost one. Okay, and it occur in both artery and vein. Okay, and in vein here, one special character is to have valve inside the vein, and this one also prevent the blood to flow back to the lower part of the body. Okay, think about the the blood the the vein is at the, your leg here. They need to move up, but the gravity have pulls down, so we need the vein to enclose it. And for the endothelium here, you have only one layer. It is a endothelium layer here, very thin, so the chemical can pass through this. One layer of the cell easily, so it's place where we exchange the chemical, okay, the waste product and the nutrient. Okay, and this is comparative structures of the blood vessels for the direction of blood flow, the artery blood flow from the heart to the body, and vein from the body back to the heart. The capillary here flow from the artery to the vein. The thickest one it is the artery. The thinnest one it is capillaries. The valves that occur in the blood vessels also occur in just only the vein, and the artery here, the the wall can resist mostly to the high blood pressures. Okay, but the, the capillaries cannot because they have only one layer. It's very thin. The, the the diameter or the cross section. Okay, this one here they have. The one that widest one it is the uh, vein, and the capillary is very small. This one just only about the diameter of red blood cell. So the red blood cell here can line up, okay, in the uh, capillaries and move. Uh, the positions of the artery basically in between or close to the bone, but the one that is vein here close to the skin. Okay, so you can see it. The, the the green or the blue, the blue colors of your arms is blood vessels. The speed of blood flow, the fast the, the fastest one is occur in the artery. The slowest slowest one here will be in the vein. Okay, the vein. And the factors cause blood flow. It is the in artery here we we use the heart pumping, so we call heart beating process. And the vein here we have three action uh, two or three actions. This is the pressure from the leg. Muscle contraction or even the pressure from the respiration pool, okay, and the the capillary here blood flow by the continuous force from the artery, okay, push into the uh, capillaries. So the we we measure blood vessels in the artery, okay, it is fastest one. The chemicals inside the red blood cells. This one here, see, hemoglobin is the one that carried oxygen to body cells from the lung. Okay, the structures of the hemoglobin here contain the protein we call polypeptide chain, and we have four unit. Each unit here we have a name. The first one we have alpha type, 
we call alpha 1 and alpha 2 and the second type it is the beta type the beta type is beta 1 beta 2 being called uh, beta hemoglobin 1 or beta hemoglobin 2 alpha hemoglobin 1 alpha hemoglobin 2 like this but the center say we have the heme protein okay ESS of the, the protein and the protein here used for carrying the iron ion okay iron iron atom so this iron atom he can use for carrying the oxygen for the body cells okay this main structures the blood pressure here can be measured uh, can can be measured by medical instrument we call sphygmo manometers and the, the value that you, you can get from this instrument here can be two values we call systolic blood pressure and the diastolic blood pressure for the systolic blood pressure here is blood pressure when the ventricle get contraction and it cause relaxation of the, the atria. Atria means plural form of the word atrium. Okay, we don't have atriums, but we have atria. And the diastolic blood pressure here it is blood pressure when the ventricle get relaxed. Okay, so the atria will get contract. So the number here, systolic blood pressure will be more than the numbers of the diastolic blood pressures. Okay, this is pictures of the conventional uh, sphygmo manometer and digital type. And here, this one here always work with the stethoscope. Okay, the stethoscope is instrument, medical instrument used for hearing the small sounds occur in your body. For example, the chest sounds or even the sound inside the blood vessels. Okay, therefore the conventional one here, we have the bulb used for pumping the air inside the cuff. The cuff is like a closure here, wrapping around your arms. Okay, so we have Velcro here, stick them together. So when they cre increase the, the pressure inside the cuff, uh, you can measure that uh, pressure by using the, the gauge here. Okay, measure the butt, butt pressure. And you have the valve to release the gas out to reduce the pressure inside the cuff when you want to remove it. And this tube used for the sphygmo manometers. Okay, and, and they use a stethoscope put in here it, uh, between the cuff and and the your arm like this and go to the ears of the nurse or the doctors so they hear the when they release and after they release the the pressures so they will hear the, the sounds the first sound represent the systolic blood pressures and the second sound here represent the diastolic blood pressure okay and this one show the digital high easier so they can detect the sound by yourself uh, so the, the digital type here can detect the sound by itself, sorry. You may see this type here at, at home to measure the blood pressures. Okay, and blood pressure here, basically the normal person here will have 120 and 80. For the, for the first value here represents systolic blood pressure and the second one here represents the diastolic blood pressures. So if you have hypertension, this number may be changed for the conventional one this this one this number is referred by the text for the school text okay but if it is medical textbook can we change this this value um, year by year maybe or two or three years we change this number so this one cannot be referred for the doctors but in in normal paper like a school paper here you can use this number for the examination paper you can use this range but it's always changed okay for 140 and 90 millimeters mercury okay and the hypertension can cause a stroke or a situation that the blood vessel inside your brain get broken and have the leaking of the blood inside the brain tissue and it destroy your brain and the hypotension this one low blood pressures the number here get lower than 90 or 60 uh, millimeter mercury so you get fun easily okay when, when you wake up at the morning here like this and change position from the, the seat and stand up very quickly so the heart cannot pump the blood to the brain enough so you get fainting. okay and compositions of the blood itself 7 to 9 percent it is a of your body weight represent the blood okay and the blood itself here from 7 to 9 percent of your body weight here 55 percent here represent liquid part and the 45 percent here represent the blood blood cells this way so you can draw the picture like this at the upper one here we call the liquid part we call the plasma and the corpuscles or the blood cells here 
represent in the corpuscle here. And the corpuscle here separated into three types. The first one can be the red blood cells or the erythrocyte, and the white blood cell here or the leukocyte, and the platelet or thrombocyte. For the red blood cells here, we can use another term as the erythrocyte, and the white blood cell here, you can use the term leukocyte. For the platelet here, you can use the word thrombocyte, and this is the amount. When you compare it, the one that has the highest number, it is the uh, red blood cells, then goes to the platelet, and after that, uh, white blood cell. But it not means that red blood cell is the most important one. All of them, the three, or the, the three type of blood cells are so, so important, even the past myself, you cannot uh, lack in one of them. Okay, the platelet here, it is basically in, in the human, human blood here, it is not the cells, but it is cell fragment. Sometimes they can contain the nucleus, but sometimes they cannot. They, they do not, sorry, they do not contain the uh, uh, nucleus, okay? But in some kinds of animals, for example, reptiles and amphibian here, it is a, basically it is the cells. So we use the term thrombocyte, but in human here, we do not use the term thrombocyte, we use the term platelet, okay? And this is by ratio. Previously, we already mentioned about the plasma. So the 7% of the plasma, basically mainly it is water, 91%. And protein here, we mainly we have three types. It's albumin and globulin. This one used for maintaining the water potential. Okay, it's the amount of water inside the blood. And the minerals, okay. And here, fibrinogen. This one, this protein is quite important for the blood clotting process. Organ can go hong lueur. And the other type here will be the solute. Solute means the chemicals that dissolve inside the blood. It is uh, electrolytes, mean the minerals or the ion. And the nutrients, okay, the gases, even oxygen or carbon dioxide, the waste product, just like a urea. So this one you get removed out of your body through the excretion and remove it in the respiration. The vitamin A, D, E, K, or even B, or even C, and some regulatory substance or hormones. Okay, and the blood here, we have three types, red blood cells, white blood cells, and pellet here. So the white blood cells here can separate into many types. We have neutrophil, lymphocytes, and monocytes, eosinophil, and basophil. We can talk about this later. And this process to separate between the plasma and the corpus source, the form element here, we can use the process of centrifugation or gan pantok. Okay. Gan pantok means, or centrifugation means the way that you use a spinning process with a very high forces. We can measure in the unit of the Swedberg unit. Okay. And the blood here mainly produced inside this this one here is a solid substance or the copper source here and the plasma. So you have three types leukocyte or the white blood cells, the thrombocyte here maybe later pellet, and here erythrocyte here is red blood cells. And this is a, the mainly all three types of blood cells here come from the bone marrow or hygra do. Okay, and the characters of the red blood cell here basically is a cells. Okay, and then you, they basically do not contain a nucleus, but the young red blood cell can have nucleus, but later they get degenerated in order to contain a lot of hemoglobin and increase the efficiencies of the blood of the red blood cells to carry the oxygen gas. And the white blood cells here is the cells and the nucleus is not brown shape, but we call lobe shape or pen, pen pool, 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 pool. Okay, and you can have many, sometimes you can have many nucleus but linked together. And the pellet here, a thrombocyte here, can be the cell fragment and do not contain nucleus in general. Uh, red blood cells. In adult, the blood here produced in the bone marrow and in children here may be produced from the spleen because the bone is not finished uh, development yet. So the shape of the red blood cell here can be the biconcave shape between this one and the, the center here may be invaginate together. Okay, and this is caused by the lossing of the nucleus. So they get invaginate. Yuk tua Okay, in male you have more concentration of the red blood cell than the female because the female have the menstruation or mi dun. And the production rate of the red blood cells and destroying rate of the degradation rate of the red blood cells here can be equal. It's about 2 million uh, cells per day. Cells. Sorry. Okay, this one talking about the chemicals inside the blood. 
red blood cells it is hemoglobin the hemoglobin here contain the iron or fe here and this fe here can change the situation from the fe with o2 like this we will call oxyhemoglobin or lead Dang. And when you lose the oxygen here, we turn into the hemoglobin without the oxygen. We call we call deoxyhemoglobin or hemoglobin. Okay. This this one supposed to be just hemoglobin. Sorry, not deoxy. It's hemoglobin an oxyhemoglobin. Sorry. And when the hemoglobin is combined with Carbon monoxide. We will call this one as a carboxyhemoglobin. Okay, but but this one here cannot be reversed. It is irreversible. So you lost that hemoglobin. And when the carbon dioxide here combined with the hemoglobin, it will turn into carbaminohemoglobin. So this one here you can get reversed. Okay, so the worst situation is the hemoglobin here combined with the carbon monoxide. So the carbon monoxide will be the air pollution. Yes, uh, they cause effect to your blood vessels, to your blood, not blood vessels, sorry. And this is a composition of the ion. Okay, for for the this is the red blood cells and this is the plasma here. You can you can have many things inside this. Mainly, it is potassium and the sodium for the ion. It's main type of the cation or the positive charge ion. And for the anion here, you can have the bicarbonate ion or HCO3 minus or some kinds of lactate. This one is acid from the lactic acid uh, turned into the salt. We call the lactate and some chloride, three main ions. Okay, and the pH here is a little acid, 6.79. Okay, so mo mostly here for the all ion combined together is this number. It's not much important. It's just only the table. It's just only the diagram for you. So the hematocrit, this word means the way you make the blood count. When you take the blood sample here and you want to know the concentration of the, the, the red blood cells, you need to count it. And that value we call hematocrit. And thank you.